Hello, everyone out there. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Friday. Haven't streamed in a couple weeks, maybe. So I thought I'd jump on and um, do a little stuff. Uh, today, I'm just going to be... formatting a book for paperback and publish that out for a client using create space so what I'm starting with is the book uh, formatted currently for uh, it's formatted currently for KDP and it has been published as an ebook to Amazon. So what we're going to do here is just put out the paperback equivalent. Uh, pretty simple process really. Um, for me, I you know take a pretty simple approach to self-publishing I don't use a bunch of fancy expensive software I don't uh, you know it is what it is the the other end of the spectrum uh, where you upload your file to the software the algorithm there is good enough I feel that it, it works doing it this way all right, so like I said, this one is current. This is the uh, current format for KDP. So This is going to have to get basically stretched out. Basically stretched out into and formatted into. Sorry, y'all. I really, like, I don't even know why I bother. I cannot work and talk at the same time. So, anyway, uh,. Gonna get stretched out. It's gonna be six by nine paperback. And uh so I let Create Space do the heavy lifting on that for me. Uh rather if they ever shut Create Space down, I'm just gonna be screwed for a minute. because uh, their interface is actually what I basically use to format my paperback books like thumbing through here seeing what we got la di da You know, taking in any free suggestions I can get from Word here. And I'll show you exactly what I do. So, like I said, if you have a, a book that's already out on Amazon as a paperback, and you have that file, basically what this video is going to show you how to do is how to take that file and turn it into the paperback edition of the book so we're almost ready to go here there's 12 chapters in this book
the book how this book has kind of a unique story to it now you see that I am correcting some things here now this book was previously edited and formatted typeset and all that fancy schmancy stuff by a publisher who shall remain nameless a, actually a vanity press out of New York and so what I'm working with here is their edited version and as you see you know I'm adding some punctuation in here based on word suggestions uh, the, the client of this particular title has already paid you know thousands to have this book professionally and I use that term loosely here published through this publishing house vanity publisher whatever and there's this much uh, stuff in here and this look word these little suggested word things that is a uh, you know that's minor I mean that's like proofreading 101 I mean this is what you do when you go through with spell check you know what I mean like I so this this client you know I this client's uh he's pretty important to me because he it's his story that actually inspired me to open my own publishing service because of the his experience with this company like I just huh, can't believe it honestly I, I can't he paid okay so he paid them thousands okay to to edit and format his book and typeset and whatever kind of other fancy language they use right thousands at least a few thousand and what he ended up with was basically a headache and look the f okay so they not only did they you know charge him this exorbitant amount to uh, take his book to market but they also had control over his royalty so they were taking a percentage of his royalties now granted I don't think this was a huge percentage of his royalties but you already got your money to take care of the book uh, why do you need a portion of the royalties as well you greedy jerks <laughs> you know what I mean like what in the world all right, so we're good there. I'm just going to hammer that save on this. And then what I want to do is I'm actually going to remove. Oh, my goodness, get up there already. I'm going to remove this. should be able to remove it we'll just leave that page there because we're gonna put that back once we format now I'm gonna say that one more time then I'm gonna jump over in an attempt to avoid a couple errors 
in the future with create space I'm gonna make the file 300 dpi if I can remember how to do that <laughs> eh. all right let's see That's not it. That's not it. I can't remember how to do it. Crap. Somewhere over here. I know that much. Show all properties. Oh, I need to write this down. I just did this not long ago and it just kind of magically came to me how to do it. Oh well. So we'll skip that part. It's not that important. That image is not even part of the story. So we'll figure that out later. I'm not going to waste a lot of time messing around with it okay so we should be good to go here uh, save one more time just to make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be and drop this down we'll go ahead and log in to create space create space is a it's a Amazon company they acquired it years ago like uh, 2004 or something and uh, Yeah, so it's uh you know, it gets the job done. So what we're gonna be doing here is publishing this book. This is the Kindle edition here, so we're gonna publish this. paperback and we'll go ahead with the guided just because uh, that's what I always do that way I'm you know I'm not to the end of the process going what did I miss and how come this isn't working so excuse me okay and I just you know basically run through and fill it out as it goes this is the second edition uh, again the that previous company had this book on lockdown and uh, he wanted they had okay so they had the ebook version priced at $7.99 on on Amazon nobody pays a seven ninety nine for uh self published ebooks. Uh you know, it's just how it is. Alright, so let's upload our interior file here. Uh they just don't in my experience for the most part they just do not uh, pay spend that much anyway so he was trying to get it priced down and basically they told him they knew better than he did and their goal was to get him three dollars for each copy blah 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 you know it's funny how if you sell publish your book and you have 
control over your own royalties, it's really not a problem to make $3 per book or 70% of your royalty, uh, 70% of the, the selling price as your royalty. Anyway, so uh, what I found out by perusing this this publisher's FAQ was that we could publish the book as a second edition like he wasn't under any type of uh, contract with him with them so that's why I, that's what we did I bought the book uh, the Kindle version for $7.99 I removed the DRM I have a video of myself doing that I uh, would only in this type of circumstance recommend doing that. Otherwise, that's kind of something you do if you're pirating ebooks, and I would caution you against doing so. Anyway, so I removed the DRM. What I ended up with was just a text file. Again, I have a video, I believe, of myself formatting uh, from the plain text file in about 20 minutes. And boom, I we had uh you know, we had an ebook ready really close to being ready for upload to Kindle Direct Publishing and he ended up adding for like forty five hundred words to the original uh text, making it a true second edition with additional information. So yeah. Goodbye, Vanity Publisher, Dirk Wads. Alright, so we've uploaded and our automated print check has found eight issues with the file. One of those is going to be they removed non-printable markup. Uh, the other one is going to be they it wasn't formatted. So the 8 by 11 Word document, of course, is not formatted for a 6 by 9 book, paperback book. That's going to be one. Uh, the images aren't 300 DPI, so they may blur when they're printed, blah. That, those are going to be the three main issues. So let's get in here. We'll launch it. This is where I let Create Space do the heavy lifting rather than trying to figure out how to format a book 6x9 uh, so that it looks right. This is what we do. We let, this, we let Create Space do the heavy lifting for us. So I'm saving myself a ton of time here, messing around with a word template. Who knows if it would even be right. Okay, so here we go. Get started. The first thing we're going to do is paste our current file into a template. Boom. So, there you have it. There's our blank page for our table of contents. And as you can see... Create Space has lovingly formatted our book for us. So let's take a look at our issues. Note here that we're now down to only two issues since we've pasted this into the template. We've let Create Space do the heavy lifting for us. We have uh, the PDF file, which was actually a Word file, you crazy people. Uh, so anyway, they've uh, fixed that issue where the the file wasn't formatted for a six by nine book blah 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 and we removed some non-printable markup all right so what we're going to do here is download this version so create space not only reformatted our whole book for us so that it fits in as a six by nine book they also uh package that in a nice little word document for us that we can then download and work with directly and that's exactly what we're going to do so I'm going to click to go back and make changes and we'll sit right here for a while while we work with this new word file so I'm going to go ahead and open that up and this is where we're going to add all the pretty lovely things like page numbers the new table of contents that has actual page numbers in it rather than just the blue links which is really all you need for an ebook and uh, you know we're gonna get rolling on this isn't that nice well 
One thing I notice with uh, Create Space when it does this, it makes it's going to look a lot better when we justify this text because you see uh, the gutter side, which is this side with the wider margin that goes in the middle of the book, on this page is just a jagged mess and it looks crummy. The other thing we're going to do here is change our font to. You'll notice that uh, paperbacks or, you know, books that are published professionally are always a serif font. They're not an Arial. Serifs are like the little fancy, like these things on the letters, that little whoop, instead of just being a straight letter. Like you see over here, there's no embellishments, flourishes, and the like. So, uh, we change it over to something that looks a little more bookish, you know. <laughs> you just respond to this text message really quick, you know. It happens in live streams as well. You know, I'm a, I need my family to know that I'm alive and a responsive human being, so... Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get rolling on this. So like I said, the first thing that I'm that I want to do is uh make this font more bookish. So we're going to do that by It's going to be a long process. We're going to select it. And I'm going to go with like some book antiqua or some bookman old style, whatever. Those bookish I, I like the, those fonts, like a Georgia is a nice font. I like those fonts better than, say, Times New Roman, which is just got to be the most boring font on the entire planet. All right, I'm going to go Bookman Old Style because I like it. And... We'll stay 12 points, and I'm going to justify it. Let's see what happens with that. Some gaps in there, like right here especially. Let's see how hard it is to fix this gap. We may have to do something else here. Let's scoot this over a little bit. What's up with this gap? Yeah, it's not going to work, yo. Hmm. Alright, so. Let's see what we can do here. You know, that one's just going to have to be like that, I guess. Because it looks better jagged than with that gap, I think. All right, so moving on. That's yeah, nice. All right, so what I'm going to do here is... So, I removed the hyperlink here because you can't click a hyperlink inside a book anyway. So, now what I'm going to do is just revert this back to regular text by removing the underline and making it black. For some reason, that wants to be down there on that. Let's see if we can shorten this a bit bring that K back up here on this same line. Let's do this. Let's enter this back down. Ugh. I think
think what I'll do is this part I'm going to make a smaller font. Let's go with 10. You know, to me, publishing books is just like doing art. Uh, you end up the mistakes or areas that, you know, out of the norm become a part of the art itself. So, all right, so let's set to making all of this text our bookman old style. Now I'm just going to leave that edge alone because I'd rather have that edge than, uh, you know, I'd rather have the edge be jagged than a bunch of weird gaps in the text. So I'm just going to run through here. We're going to update all of the text to, and you know, there might, excuse me, I'm sorry, there might be an easier way to do this. You know what we forgot to do? We totally forgot to clock in. Let's go do that. So for my timekeeping needs, I use Toggle. That's without the E on the end, Toggle.com. And it's, I mean, they have a premium version, but I use the free one works for me. I don't really need the additional features. Not sure. I think it was about 10 after 10 when I started. So I have to go in and adjust my time later. Alright, so we are working with our Word file. If you're just tuning in I am uh, I'm actually updating this book or formatting it rather for paperback using create space to publish and we're currently at the step where I am changing the font of the ebook file to be a more bookish type of font. So as with ebooks, usually the font's going to be a sans serif, you know, no little flourishes and curls on the T's and, you know, little lines and stuff um, like you would have on the internet or with ebooks. We're going to add a serif font, and I find uh, Times New Roman to be incredibly boring. So we're using Bookman Old Style, 12 points. Uh, thought about justifying it, but it looked crappy because it was making some weird gaps. So we're just going to go with what we're going with. You know, that happens a lot. Like I said, in anything art and, and book publishing is certainly not exempt from that. Uh, you end up <clears throat> excuse me, making adjustments that become a part of the art. So we're just rolling with it. There's no rules here. We're just doing what we do. Is this a heading? Because I want my headings to say to stay uh, sans serif just because having to run through here and change a thing one time is quite enough alright you notice how uh, changing the font also is going to add some quite a bit of length to the book as well so just simply because it's a more sparse font. Uh, 
it's a little further apart. It's not as bunched together. Keep going. Again, we're just updating the font for print. And this is the last bit here. This is actually the, all this I'm doing right now, this last chapter, is uh, all the newly added content for the second edition. So. this part this part here I'm gonna leave that different <laughs> there we go and then I'm going to pull this up here and we're gonna remove this hyperlink because you can't click a hyperlink in a book And that's going to require us just to make this. Just because you remove the hyperlink, it doesn't make the. It doesn't ununderline the the address and whatnot. So yeah, um, you know you can't click a link in a paperback book. So there you have it, pretty much. Rolling right along with this, everything's looking great go through here in a minute and check our page breaks and that kind of stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and let's see I'm actually going to go ahead and insert our page numbers Go bottom of the page and we'll go center. Nice. And I believe. I always forget. See, okay, so I've selected different first page because we don't want a page number on the title page different odd and even pages because you know they just are I don't know why maybe not let's see what happens if we un un undo this and reinsert our page numbers bottom of the page center it it's not really going to be since they're centered it won't be different if they were say out here it would be different and we'd have to place them uh, separately in each area okay so since they're centered where every page is the same so we're good there I'm going to go ahead and insert our table of contents here references table of contents and I'm gonna go with automatic table 2 just because now I believe Let's see what we need to do. 
gonna have to do a little Just update this. This was an easy fix in that what I'm struggling with here is that the chapter and a little kind of name of the chapter sort of stuff is on two different lines and so it's pulling that in here as two so we've got three different lines for chapter one it's gonna take a little figuring out let's look at our headings first and see if there's a way that we can format them because I really like the two lines let's see this one doesn't need to be I don't like messing with styles much in in word because they're just it's sim they're simpler in that's why I use Google Documents. The main reason I use Google Documents to format books is because the styles are so simple. So let's just figure out what we want to do here. First off, I don't want this to have a style. So I cleared the formatting there. This is a heading one. I mean, you see, if I click this, it's a heading one because when I when I did the table of contents, it pulled it right in here, right? But the problem is <clears throat> these two. I don't need both these things. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that's not a heading. I'm just going to I'm just going to create a style. And I'm going to modify it. I don't want it to be a heading, so it's going to be normal so that it's not pulled in through the table of contents and I'm actually uh, yeah, that's not what we wanted to do Here's my style. Oh, come on now. I'm going to modify it. What is that noise? Ugh, who's chatting? Who is it? Erica Drayton, hello. I always miss my comments. Like, I'm so deep into what I'm doing. Okay, so I have somebody trying to help me. Remove the style from my... Right, this I know. That's what I'm working on here. So, But I'm going to create my own style because I want it to, on the page, retain 
the boldness and whatnot. Do, 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 do. Bold it. That'll work. Do that. Yeah. All right. So let's just uh, apply that. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this as well. <clears throat> What's everybody up to? When did these come in? Like I just had this noise happen and all of a sudden there's 800 messages on here. I just, yeah, I don't like Scrivener. I don't, yeah, I'm not a Scrivener fan. I like simple tools. I don't like people, I don't like spending a ton of money on tools. That's just not my, I'm cheap, I'm too cheap to buy tools. <laughs> so I got my Word, which as a 365 it's the one's like seven bucks a month or something like that so let me click this again yeah I can't do that all right, so I think I could automatically probably update these headings, but because I don't want to update this one below here, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go through manually and apply because I don't want, I want this to be in the table of contents, but I don't want this to be in it. So, fun, fun. When you, uh, when you work on these files, you, it, you become very familiar with them because you end up going through here let's see if this little trick works on this nope you end up going through here like a million times like no joke I'll go through it this I'll probably go through this same word document probably about 10 to 15 times minimum while I'm working on it, and then once I publish it to create space, I'll end up going through it probably a minimum of five times. Yeah, see, I don't use any of that fancy stuff. I'm not into the end design and all that stuff. I just, yeah, that's just not my game. I like to keep things really simple. You know, my clients are satisfied. My stuff looks great, in my opinion. You know, you take it or leave it. That's how I feel about it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of expensive tools, and I like to stay inside my wheelhouse with and work with what I already know how to use. So, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of like what is what does Scrivener do that's so special that should make me want to use it as opposed to say Word. I don't, you know. I don't even use Word to write my books. I use Google Documents because it's simplified and I don't end up, you know, stressing over a bunch of crap. Then, you know, especially for like ebooks, like you don't need a bunch of fancy formatting. So I just put it together and then once I'm ready to go paperback, uh, I download it from Google Documents and work with it in Word since Word does have the expanded, you know, tool set and whatnot that I need. to add my, you know, do things like add my page numbers, actually add a table of contents that has page numbers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, let's see. You screwed me for my series. Bible, it's really good with having everyone in place at one time. So, like Scrivener, it has, um, my books in a huge world created it's helpful for me right right and I can understand where that part of it would be helpful I have used a tool that had uh you know like all those extra tools where you can keep up with your characters and your spaces and all that kind of stuff but I don't I'm mostly a non-fiction writer so I, I don't really benefit 
from the extraneous tools. I, I, I really just find it in my way, <laughs> you know. But if if you're writing nonfiction and like you said, Erica, you've created this enormous world. Like you know, like if I was J.K. Rowling, I would need something to keep up with all the people, you know, in Harry Potter, all the places, all the created everything you know I definitely need a way to keep up with that and I think that's what Scrivener does well but just in my experience like I said as a predominantly nonfiction writer I I can't really find it useful for myself I have written some nonfiction but not to any sort of scale that would require all that crazy tracking you know Update the table. Update the entire thing. Yes, that looks way better. Yeah, I was not digging that three lines for every chapter thing. Way better. Let's make this black. I don't know why Word has that where they like those blue headings on everything. That's another reason that I use Google Documents because I hate the default uh, Word styles. And I know you can go in and change them all. I've done it multiple times. I'm tired of doing it. So I just go in Google Docs and use the default ones there because I like them. What kind of stuff do you stream, Erica? Do you stream? Let me... Let me Look, let me just take my lazy self and scroll up. Instead of trying to berate you on your Scrivener and your tools, let's find out. Let's see, okay, so. Used to stream frequently. So damn busy. Totally get you there. I haven't streamed in like two weeks. Used Scrivener, blah, blah, blah. Used InDesign. You know, I think I opened InDesign like one time. I was like, oh no. And I'm a Photoshop user, so. <laughs> I was like, yep, nope. Oh, okay, let's see. So, yeah, so. Yeah, I don't see. Do you stream writing, Erica, when you live stream? Or what? Do you stream in creative? Alright, so now I'm going to turn this on what are I look I don't even know what do you call this crap here show hide that weird symbol which is a paragraph so anyway I turn this on and I'm gonna go through and check my page breaks just to make sure there's one everywhere there's supposed to be one right because you don't want to be running your book through the thing and suddenly you know chapter one is on the same page as the ending of your preface or whatever because it's ta it doesn't look good it's tacky all right so we'll just do a quick run through almost ready to upload this and see what it looks like on the other side then we'll be able to see what kind of fixes we need to make to our word file you know, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to save real quick. Cause... Y'all, I'm so I still have not found an effective. I stream my writing about my universe. I also do a dual stream twice a month with another streamer who is an illustrator. So are your books illustrated? Is it that he and I are collaborating? Here's my answer. He and I are collaborating on a series where I write the words and he illustrates some images for it. That's fantastic. I had a kid's book and I got stuck at Illustrator. Now, I can draw. I can draw anything in the world that I can see. But when it comes to dreaming up something inside my head, like, that is where my talent ends. So... I could sit here and draw everything on my desk and it will look just like it does on the desk, but I can't draw a freaking monkey out of my head. And so, 
I think the problem, I think my problem is that I just don't have a process for developing characters because it's never really something that I practiced. So, anytime I try to draw something like that, it looks stupid. Let's see, streamer, you and I, the books I'm writing with sketch are illustrated. The books I'm writing about my universe universe shadow realm is not illustrated and they are much lower i bet so this sounds like some extensive work you got going on here you know i did one novel and it's a shortish novel uh it's this one it's called population minuscule it's kind of like a along the lines of the borrowers and that kind of thing. I've always been fascinated with tiny people. And so paperback, and this is probably a 12 point font in here. It's 231 pages, so not huge. And look, this took me six years, but in my defense, I started it in like 2006 and it kind of sat around on my hard drive and then in 2012 I just kind of pushed through finishing it and I made myself a goal of 40,000 words which uh based on what you're saying here I'm thinking is probably child's play to you <laughs> I mean this thing you're talking about sounds huge so yeah 40,000 words and I thought I would die before it was done holy crap I think, you know, I think that's why I concentrate a lot in the, uh, let's see, this is, what's this? Yeah, we're done with this. That's why I concentrate a lot inside that, uh, realm of nonfiction because it's so much easier to write stuff that you don't have to make up as you go along <laughs> to a certain extent if it's something you already know how to do. That's a lot of stipulations. But you know what I mean? Like, making stuff up is not easy. That's what, yeah. So, yeah, if you, if it, you know, if I'm writing something nonfiction, it's something that I already know. It flows along really nicely. I'm not trying to figure out somebody's name. I'm not trying to think of who to add in next as a character or how to develop a character further or, you know, what in the plot needs to happen next for magic to happen or whatever. You know, it's just the steps of the process. <laughs> All right, so if you're just tuning in, here's where we're at on our Create Space book. So we took it from an ebook file and we've been working with it in Word. Like I said, I like Create Space, do the heavy lifting there, and I just basically do a little bit of stuff to the ebook file, which, you know, is basically just an 8 by 11 document. Do a few things to it and then I upload it to Create Space and it goes through this process which we're going through right now again. Uh, it goes through that process. I write my 100k novels in half a month. Yeah. Yeah, I did 40,000k and thought I was going to die. <laughs> You're like two and a half times that in six months. What you trying to be, Erica? The greatest author of all time. No, really, that's amazing. That's a ton of work. So you must write full time then. Like I can't imagine if you're doing that, and you must not have any you like a husband or kids or anything like that, right? Hundred k novels in, I said six months in half a month in two weeks. You're writing a hundred thousand words. Is that what you're telling me right now? Ah uh, yes, I have a I have a girlfriend and two cats, so I relate. So Okay, so two uh, I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this. So you write 
a hundred thousand words in two weeks correct in about uh, that is insane like are you doing anything else besides writing <laughs> do you sleep <laughs> 2,000 words an hour. I can do that. You know, I can actually do that if, uh, I can actually do that if I'm on a roll. But here's the thing. That is not consistent. That's very rare. You know, got a little ADHD going on. So, uh, I work full-time as a virtual assistant. And so, like you working your nine to five job, my time to work on my personal projects is limited to evenings and weekends. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not, look, by the time I'm done with my job for the day, my brain is just like I'm fried. I do like, if I had to do something, I could. Otherwise, no. Did I upload the right file? I'm going to go back. This is why I shouldn't talk and work at the same time. So I'm going to upload a different file, which is not that one. It's going to be this one right here. Ugh. What a waste of time and life that was. Alright, so I write uh, uh, three hours during the week. Six hours or so during the weekend, I can get about 20. Right. Wow, that is, you know, that is a high level of commitment right there. So, three hours during the week. Oh, which is doable. I could, you know, I could even push myself to do that. That's a, that's a decent. And then on the weekend, six hours each day. So, up to 20,000 words on the weekend. On work nights, get about 15,000 words in five days. You wish you could do more. Well, look, uh, if you, hey, Bionic Vapor, how you doing, buddy? If you, uh, look, if, if these books and stuff are this elaborate, I mean, it seems like to me you ought to be able to kick this into a full-time thing definitely go over and check out self publishes uh stuff that's dale he's actually one of my clients i do some things for um and he has a large repertoire of youtube videos that might help you out as far as marketing and things like that go if writing is something that you're looking to kicking up to the next level and being able to do full-time uh so I definitely check out some of his stuff over on YouTube. Self publishing with Dale, bring him right up. You can check out uh some of his stuff over there. He also has a blog, self publishing with Dale dot com. Uh but yeah. I mean if you uh, if you can punch out look, there's not very many people on earth that can punch out that much content in that short of amount of time and work full time. That is insane. Bonic Vapor is cooking some breakfast. What are you cooking, man? If you say like bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, I'm going to explode. One of your books out. How's your book on Amazon doing, Erica? That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dale has a lot of like book launch. He's got a free book launch checklist uh, for book launches that is really cool. Like some of the stuff I, you know, I've been self publishing since 2011, and some of the stuff on there like never occurred to me. So it's just a good resource. Mexican you so you're having Mexican for breakfast? Wow, that is uh crazy. 
<sighs> so I'm just thrumming through here, seeing how we're looking. You know, I really, I still don't like that jagged. I'm going to have to go in and see what I can do about this edge. We're going to have to justify this or something because it just doesn't look professional. Ah, well, you know, here's the thing about books, uh, especially with Amazon. You know, it's going to be there when you get to it. And, uh, you will you know, you can always do a relaunch and whatever when things are looking better. So, that's one thing about books. You can always relaunch. And, you know, Amazon has so many promotional services anymore. You know, you could run a free promo if you're, uh, if it's Kindle and you did the KDP Select program, you can always run a free promo or countdown deal. And then uh, if you don't want to do any of that, you can do Amazon Marketing Services. Uh, Dale has some videos on that as well. Uh, and that can get results for you as well. So you can always plan a relaunch. You know, and this client, that this book that I'm working on here, his, his next book, which we actually published uh, beginning of this month, he did a promo through a company, which Dale also promotes. That's how we found out about it. He actually won like a contest or whatever and got a free promotion from this, co this company called Book Doggy. So it's like book, D-O-G-G-Y dot com and they do uh little campaigns with their social media and whatnot and he actually ended up getting almost 500 downloads on his launch day so and their service is 12 bucks you know and i've seen other services like that out there as well so we got some more work to do on this book file so yeah things like that you know It'll be there when you get to it. Relaunch it. I mean, you know, if it's as extensive as it sounds and you've put this much work into it, yeah, I'd definitely like to see you get something back out of that, you know. I'm very intrigued by the entire, you know, world building thing as far as writing goes, so... Sabonic Vapor made Mexican for breakfast. I appreciate you stopping by, bud. I feel, you know, I feel guilty because it seems like I never catch you on your streams. I now have my notifications on. It just seems like I do my crap during the day and then, you know, I get off and move on with my evening, you know, cleaning or whatever. And that's when everybody else is popping on, so... I end up missing people. I need to take some time though and go in and watch some replays and that kind of thing. Alright, so let's see what we're going to do here. I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to try to work with this other stuff. What happens if I justify this? Yeah, how do I get rid of these gaps? Can't be having them gaps, yo. Let's Google it. That's what I always do when I need help. So, how to remove gaps in justified text? Select the text. Right click the text. Click paragraph on the indents and spacing tab. Click the drop down next to alignment. Click justified. Who? Let's open this up. You know, this is a lot more messing around with this than I was hoping to have to do. Let's see, right click on the text, click format, tick the kerning for fonts box. Uh, 
Okay. Well, let's try it. I said, let's do it on a bigger block like this page. I'm going to try this page here. Because. All right. So then what do they say do? <laughs> <laughs> There's not really a big problem here. I don't see any huge gaps, but let's do this anyway, you know? Okay, so click paragraph on the indent and spacing tab, justified format font kerning. Okay. Indents and spacing, it's justified. What was the other thing? Fonts and something? Hold on, hold on, let me see. Right click again on the text and click format. Oh, you're a ding. Okay, click f font. Font? All right. What do they say? Adjust the. I thought it said. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Right click and click font format, comma font. Click the kerning for fonts box on the character spacing tab. Uh. So I don't think I've selected the right thing. I don't see a format thingy. Isn't that convenient? Don't you just love how a word changes just often enough to screw you up? Yeah, get back on here and stream. I noticed that this, uh, the creative, uh, area, if you will, is growing all the time, so... Options, advanced. I'm just I'm trying to fix these gaps. So, advanced. Good night in the morning. All right. What was the one? Don't expect tick. Don't expand character spaces. This sounds like a nightmare to me. I think I'm not gonna touch that. All right, let's just see what happens here. Well, Erica, you you sound like a motivated lady. I think uh you know, that level of dedication is you know, you just you don't put that level of dedication into something and not see some type of return from it, so. I think you should brace yourself. <laughs> I think once you do a little marketing, uh, that your stuff might just explode. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Because, I mean, you're talking, it sounds like to me you're talking about the level of universe and, you know, I hope you won't find this comparison insulting because that, it's really my highest compliment. But it sounds like the level of universe building that you're talking about is on a J.K. Rowling or a George Lucas type level to me so fifty plus book ideas ready to go 
you know, uh, you could probably do some coaching as well. <laughs> I mean, I I have not met really such a motivated writer before. Terry Pratchett. Okay, so here's where my complete ignorance is going to show. Um, I'm not very well read, so I'm not familiar with Terry Pratchett or Discworld. Um, I just, like, I just, I stay between, uh, trying to, you know, make a living and feed myself. Um... And then doing, like, my own content stuff. Besides that, like, I just have, like, I'm out of time, you know, by the time it comes around to reading. Like, you know, I've never been a big reader, really. Love to write, but never been a huge reader. Which, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will say, well, if you want to write well, you have to read well. And, you know, I can agree with that to a certain extent. And I'm, I'm certainly not saying that I haven't ever read books. I mean, if you cram all of my 40 whatnot years into, you know, I've read quite a few books. So, I'm trying to think, like, what's the latest thing that I read? So, you run a writing Discord. When in the world do you have time to run a Discord channel? <laughs> I created an online magazine where members can submit flash fiction to it for people to read with almost 250 subscribers so far. So, do me a favor if you can find a moment in your busy schedule, Erica. Shoot me an email at heyoava.com no that's not a scratch that heyoava at gmail so that's hey yo ava h-e-y-y-o a-v-a v as in victor heyoava at gmail send me your links to this stuff and I will put it in my video description if you're interested I mean like you don't have to but I will include that in my video description without a problem doing so. Terry's world ended with 42 books before he passed away. Well, that is amazing. That is really amazing. So, he has a world the for, the 42 books. What how does that wor work? Okay, so you have a universe, and the books are about, what, the characters in the universe, happenings in the universe, or both? I'm going to say both. I can see where, you know, that would basically be a book idea generator. If you came up with the world first... Of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, shoot that over to me via email. If you have any problems, let me know. I will put your info right in my video description. Yeah, I'd love to keep in touch and see how things go for you. I think, uh, I mean, just based on this short interaction with you and thanks for stopping by and commenting by the way um I feel like you know you're on the the precipice here you're on the brink of something I think you could do big things all right so I'm just going through and justifying this stupid text so it doesn't look so jagged on that one side you know you're gonna publish books they should look like books all 
All right, word, don't get weird on me now. There we go. Okay, I'm going to save. We're having hiccups here. I'm an avid saver. <laughs> All right. Scroll, 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 scroll forever. We are scrolling. There we go. Things looking pretty good. It was just like those few areas where it wanted to get gappy on me, so. Gappy, it's a word. You know, if you're a writer, you're allowed to make up words. I bet Erica and her universe has some made up words. And if she doesn't have made up words, then she's probably got some made up places. So, you know, that's the kind of creative license you get as a writer. You get to make up things. All right. So, gappy. You don't want your paragraphs to be gappy. I mean, could I be any bigger of a dork? You know, I embrace it. I'm really hoping to promote StoryZine more. So that's the magazine thing, right? You know, I've toyed with the idea of creating magazines for various reasons and you know, work and things. I have not concentrated very heavily in that area. So, do you use, what do you use, issue, or do you have some type of platform that you use for, or do you, is it just a PDF? So, if you're just tuning in, I'm working on this Create Space book, and I'm talking to Erica Drayton. Drayton, did I say that right? Sorry, in advance. Uh, who is a fiction writer who has created her own universe and is a very prolific writer. Look, the woman... Okay, so she told me that she writes... Oh, I don't want to get it wrong. 100,000 words in two weeks, y'all. So, look for her. See, she's supposed to email me her, her links and things. Look for her links in the description. Because I think you're going to want to, if you care anything about books, check out her series. Story Zine. That is the magazine. So, yeah, so all these links are going to be. I can look that up. So, like, if on the off chance that you don't send me an email, I'm going to try to look this stuff up and include it because, uh, you know, I really feel like, you know, not that I have such. <laughs> Uh, not that I have such a large audience here on Twitch, but, you know, I try to do the small things that I can. And I do sometimes end up putting these uh, streams on my YouTube channel as well, just so there's that. Uh, but yeah, let's get that link out there, Story Zine. Now, with her magazine, her magazine is where members can submit flash fiction for people to read with almost 250 subscribers. That is fantastic. We just put out the third issue on May 20th. I will send you that email about me, which makes me feel hella gassed a little to be sharing myself. Like, well, you know, the share. you're going to have to share. If you're going to be a self-published author, which I assume you're self-publishing your stuff. Um, if you're going to be one, you're going to have to talk about yourself. Look, I am, you see... I'm not the run-of-the-mill streamer. I don't have a face cam. I have a face camera. It's set up in the corner. I never turn it on because I think my keyboard and watching myself type is so much more interesting. <laughs> 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 
which is really ridiculous, but, you know, do your own thing your own way. So, you know, sharing about yourself isn't always the the easiest thing. It's not usually the funnest thing unless you're an insufferable narcissist, which I'm not, and I'm assuming you're not either. Uh, You know, it's not the kind of thing we do for fun. It's the kind of thing we do to get our stuff out there. And, uh, you know, I don't know, look, I don't know anything about your book, but it's sure just based on what, or your series, rather, your universe, whatever you're calling this thing, it surely sounds interesting. It sounds like, and with your level of dedication, you deserve to have, you know, be known. That is crazy. You could be like a writing coach. Getting out that level of content with a full-time job and a family, that is insane. I don't know anybody else who does that. I mean, I don't. Alright, so now we're going to dress this up a little bit with... I like to do a header, and I like to put the author name on one side of the page and the name of the book on the other page. Because it just adds a bookish feel to what you're doing. So, pull out my professional, professionally published book. This is not my book. Uh, for reference here, Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Originally published in French. So anyway, so we're going to put the author on the left page and the name of the book on the right page and how do we tell which is which well the one with the wider margin is going to go in the gutter of the book and so this page is left and that one's right so it's opposite as you can see here in the the deal here all right so this instance we are going to have different odd and even pages this may mess up our page numbers we'll have to go in and fix them so I'm gonna go with the bookman no it's Ariel let's do the bookman but I want all caps and I want it small like 10 and on this side we'll say over here I'm going to put it on that so I might center these we'll just see oh really you couldn't remember the formatting from that side to over here it's not typo our header What do we think? That's the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Let's scroll down into. Let's get out of this header first. Let's scroll down here into the body of the book. The body of the book. Also, when you're doing like professional uh, typesetting or formatting or whatever you want to call this. Uh, professionally, the new chapter in the book is supposed to be on the left page, I believe. And if you have any pages where the chapter ends, let's see, I don't see any right offhand. Let's see, we'll just use this. If you have a, a page where the chapter, and let's say this chapter ended right here at change. That's called a widow, and you don't want that. You want to cram that up on the previous page somehow. These are aspects of traditional printing and publishing that I abandon, because who cares? Is the book content good? Uh, Do the majority of people know there's supposed to be these weird whatevers about it? I don't know and I don't care. I just, I feel like it's dumb if at some point somebody comes along and is like, hey, idiot, you're supposed to (laughs) have this stuff in this certain area in a certain way or whatever, then I'll look into fixing it. But until then, I've had one person be like, hey, did you know this is supposed to be this way? 
I've had one person say something. I, to me, one person does not the rules make. So, all right. So I'm going to save, and we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to upload this again. So we're going to upload a different file, but really it's going to be the same file that's fixed. Upload a different file. Browse. And we'll let that load. What is going on? There we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that load. I'm going to take a short break. I'll be right back, people. Two minutes. Okay. Oh my goodness, 16 freaking emails. Thanks for the follow, Erica. I will follow you back. All right, so in the finishing stages of, of completing this, if you're just now tuning in which yeah uh, so what I've done is I'm I've taken a book an ebook formatted as an e it was formatted as an ebook so you know eight and a half by eleven and we've gone through the process of formatting it for paperback now you know, I, I did not edit this book. Uh, it was edited by a previous publisher earlier in this video. I went through that entire rant. Uh, so, I won't repeat that. Um, but yeah, this, uh, what, the, the back story, let me see if I can get my train of thought, da 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 Thanks, Erica. Appreciate it. I will definitely add your information to the description. And if this goes on YouTube, I don't know yet. It's awfully long and boring. Uh, if it goes on YouTube, I'll put it on there as well. But yeah, appreciate that. I'm so glad you stopped by. So anyway, we are... What we've done to this file is we've taken it from ebook file... And we let Create Space do the heavy lifting for us as far as formatting it into this lovely 6x9 paperback version. And we've added our page numbers. We've added our cute little headers. We've justified our text. We've changed the font from Arial to Bookman Old Style. And we're waiting for it to process. All done. So... If you remember, the first time we uploaded the file to CreateSpace, that was the 8.5 by 11 Word file. 
we had eight issues now we're down to one and I'm going to bet that that is probably the removable um, removal of some non printable markup from the file so we'll see here in a minute and we're just we're grinding down to almost done here yep we removed non printable markup from your document which I have no idea what it, that's always there I have no idea what it is doesn't matter all right so one problem right away is our second edition is not staying centered we will fix that let's see so I just like to go ahead and fix the things as I'm going along I'm gonna guess but I don't really know maybe this page break being on the same line as this is maybe the problem I don't know I had this problem a lot I've ended up having to actually move that little piece of content before so we'll just see let's see if we can just select that it's centered and save that all right let's go ahead and page through here when this prints this uh, image here is going to be black and white and what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that everything is where it's supposed to be that their page breaks appear where they're supposed to be and there's not a lot of extraneous space where there's not supposed to be any so just to clear that up a bit um, you want your word chapters to always begin on a new page rather than being on the ending of the same page as the ending of the previous chapter so that's what we're looking for we're looking for to make sure that everything is in its proper spot such as our page numbers and our little things I'm seeing right now these things are on the opposite pages they're supposed to be on use our example here you can see that the author is supposed to be on the left page and the title of the book is supposed to be on the right page so we'll fix that really quick Have saved a lot of time by not <laughs> typing this lot look I cut and uh, I'm gonna cut and paste the one while I typed out the long one whatever you know I try all right so there we go gonna hit save on that and here we go back so now these should be switched when we re, re upload like I was saying earlier like you end up going through the word document itself uh, you know 15 or 20 times then you end up going through it on here you know a good f at least five times minimum before you can okay it to be published everything looks excellent the font looks good the ju justification is good Alright, so I saw some extra spacing right here. It's page 70, so we'll scroll down and fix that. A little too far. It's going to be right here, coming up right here. Got a little extra space here. Yep click save avid saver all right keep going and 
this is going to be the last bit. I think the book looks good. I like it. Alright, we're still going to go back because we made those few changes. We've got a saved file, so we're going to re-upload yet again. You really get the full experience. Like, I, you know, I know this isn't the most exciting thing to watch, but it gives you an idea of actually on the back end how much goes into getting the book to look right. To be professional, to, you know, be something that you're proud to present to your readers. You know, and there's people out there who use a lot fancier tools than I do, and I realize that I'm sure there's better ways to do this. I'm sure there's, you know, more efficient ways to do it. This is the way that I know. And so, you know, I go with what I know first and pick up the extra knowledge as I go along. I mean, you know, three years ago, my my books didn't look this good. I've, you know, I've done a lot of learning, you know, and I pick up new things all the time and apply that knowledge. So, matter of fact, all of my own books sit on Amazon in various shades of disarray. Like, this is one that I'm really not proud to admit but the spine you'll notice there is a typo it's supposed to be minuscule and I've left the C out that's one these are things that are, my books are just sitting there unfixed so also you'll notice my books the page numbers are messed up so like I've got a page number over here in the gutter of the book uh there double spaced and I believe 14 point aerial the pages are white so for a fiction book this book should be uh, a serif font because most of the time they are it should be uh, on cream paper you print you print Nonfiction on white paper and fiction on cream paper. So, my books sit around like this in various forms of disarray and need to be fixed. But, you know, that's okay as long as the books that I'm putting out for my clients are top notch. I can deal. <laughs> you know, and I've, I, you know, I've gone a lot farther accomplishment wise with my clients books uh, I had one guy he went number one bestseller in two weeks and then Terry his book went number one new release uh, the first week it was out so okay so we fixed our second edition yes and we'll scroll through this should be the last time probably going to be fairly quiet because I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. We've successively, uh, successfully switched our header to be on the right pages. Everything is looking great. And again, just as I'm scrolling through, what I'm looking for is to make sure uh, every chapter and section of the book begins on a new page. There's not any extraneous spacing in places that there's not supposed to be. And that it looks like a book in here, you know? There's no weird gaps, because I did justify all the text. Uh, basically, what I've done is I've formatted this file from an ebook, and we've added, we've changed the font, we've added just, we've justified the paragraphs, us, uh, uh, we've added the headers, we've added 
table of contents, page numbers, and this is going to be the last section. Everything looks great, very happy. And we're going to save and continue. Yes, we're done with that part now. We're going to ignore the issues and continue because remember that issue was just our issue was just that there was some non-printable markup removed from our file. Now let me see if I can find this PDF file. go. Please let this cover pass because this is the cover we got from the publisher, the previous publisher. So here's hoping. Gonna continue. going to submit those files for review. And it's going to take 24 hours. And we're going to go in and do our stuff so we can be eligible to go in bookstores and online online retailers. I'm going to copy and paste. choose our categories which are was like sports and recreation and we did fishing and there's no fishing on here what in the world I hate these BSAC, BISAC categories. It's such a pain in the tail. Let's see if maybe it's under hobbies. Here we go. Wow, that was ridiculous. <sighs> Book language, country of publication. Excuse me. We should be able to go back here. And we'll go 
boom, 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 because now we are eligible for bookstores and on online retailers. I'm going to set this at... I believe that's going to color us done here. And we'll just be waiting to hear back from Create Space if that file is good. So, we're done. So, we took the book from ebook to paperback, published it on Create Space. Now we only have to wait, make sure our files are approved, and it will appear. Well, we'll approve our proof, and then it will appear on Amazon as paperback. So, there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate Self Publish, Bionic Vapor, and Erica for stopping by. Make sure to check out the description of this video to get Erica's information on her universe, her books, and her online magazine, and her Discord. Well, I'm not sure if she got the link to that, but you know, you can get that from her uh, with the information about her magazine. So, anyway. Be sure and check all that stuff out in the description. Thanks for stopping by, all the three of you. And hey, if you're watching this on the replay, I appreciate it. I hope that you'll give me a follow. And thanks for being here. Listen, I hope you have a great Friday. And I will see you and look forward to connecting with you in the next stream.